Hey there, Wargamers, Justin R. Painter here, and today I'm going to be teaching you an interesting technique for how to approach Space Marine Lightning Claws. Now, before we get into that, I would like to preface this by saying that the techniques we're going over today are not specific to the Space Marine line or even the Warhammer 40k universe. These techniques may be focusing on Lightning Claws, but you can use these same techniques in a variety of different ways on different weapons and in different games. The first thing that comes to mind is using it for some interesting glowing style weapon effects for perhaps a D&D or Pathfinder miniatures game. So the sky really is the limit. Go into this tutorial with an open mind and think about what you could do for your miniatures. We've got our lightning claw here, and in its current state, everything we've done thus far was done with dry brushing and washes. If you're interested in how to achieve these effects quickly, please check out our video tutorial in our library. We're going to start things off today by applying some masking tape. This is our Tammy masking tape, and we're going to be focusing on the bottom edge of these blades here. We want to cover up the areas we don't want to get paint on, and make sure that the blades are predominantly what's exposed. With our claws masked off here, it's time for us to go ahead and grab the paints that we're going to be using for today. To start things off, we're going to be using our Scale 75 Holdra Blue paint, followed up with our Minotaur Lagoon Blue, as well as Minotaur Werewolf Gray, as well as some Minotaur Ghost Tint Plasma Fluid, tried and true. We're going to wrap things up with a little bit of our foundation white from Vallejo. Any white you have will do, but this is what I've got on hand. I've gone ahead and thinned down a little bit of Holdra Blue for our airbrush, and we're going to come in here and spray down at the base of the blades. We're not going to cover the whole thing, we just want to put this dark blue at the base so that some of that silver, which is naturally brighter, is exposed so our lighter colors cover that very nicely. When applying this paint, pay particular note to the opacity of it in that if you apply multiple passes to a certain area, this is going to get really dark really quick. So be careful with that and stop when you've got a consistency or an intensity of the blue color to your liking. For our next color, we're going to be coming in with Lagoon Blue here, and we're going to be focusing on all of the areas that were not hit with the Holder Blue. We want to go right up next to where the Holder Blue is applied, but we do not want to cover the whole thing. We want to preserve that gradient of dark blue into light blue, and this is going to help us push the depth and get these interesting looking claws. These claws are already looking like something that would be present on a Space Wolf with their Frost Claws or something like that, so when you're working with these effects, really kind of imagine what kind of weapons your Space Marines or your miniatures or your little fantasy bros are going to have. For our next color, we're going to be coming in with our Werewolf Grey here, and we'll be focusing on the top edges of these blades. As we did before, we want to continue to preserve the gradient that we've built up on these claws already. So from Holdra Blue into our Lagoon Blue, and now into our Werewolf Grey. We're going to have that nice dark blue into the light blue, into this light blue-gray right here at the tip. With our paints now dry, we're going to come in here with our Ghost Tint Plasma Fluid, and it's been thinned down into one-to-one -one ratio, and we're going to apply it to these blades almost like a wash or a glaze. I like to do this because it ties all the colors together and really gets a unified, interesting, icy blue sort of effect. I really enjoy doing this. Now, you could apply this paint with the airbrush, but I like the consistency and the intensity you get by applying it by hand. But experiment with this and find out what works best for you. With our Ghost Tint Plasma Fluid now dry, it's time to come in for the next step. And for that, we're going to be using our white paint, and we're going to be applying some edge highlights to all the hard edges of the blades both sides of the top portions of the blade, as well as the sharp portion on the underside of the blade. As an optional step, once your highlights are done, you can come in here with a very fine tip and do some little glint marks where the light would catch the sides of the blade here. 
Now we've done these as more of a glowing blade versus an actual lightning blade. If you wanted to do something more akin to an actual power weapon from Warhammer 40k, I've got a video in our YouTube library that shows how to do a power weapon with an airbrush, as well as how to do a power weapon effect without an airbrush. So if you're interested in how to do those effects, make sure you check out our library and check out those videos. If you do decide to push forward with this optional effect for your lightning claws, I encourage you to apply this glint effect to the side of the blade as well as the top, not just one. I think it adds an extra layer of detail and looks really cool. And here we go with a handful of paints and some really easy to follow and use techniques, we've got our completed lightning claws. With these tools in your toolbox though, the sky really is the limit and I encourage you guys to get out there, replicate this effect on your miniatures, maybe even try and change it up. Use some different colors or different washes and see what you can come up with. All right, with our paints now drying the effect applied, I think we've got an interesting effect really quickly for our lightning claws. As I said at the beginning of the video, remember that you can utilize these techniques in a variety of different ways, on a variety of different weapons, and for a variety of different miniatures, not just the Warhammer 40K universe. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding the little bell so you get alerts when we put up new content. And if there's anything you think we can do to improve, anything you'd like to see us work on in the future, or general comments or questions, make sure you sound off in the comments below. We'd love to interact with you guys and see what you have to say. If this technique was somehow helpful for you, or maybe you used it on your miniatures, and you'd like to share those with us, make sure you check out our Facebook group, The Tap Garrison, where you can interact with all the guys from the Death Resigns team, as well as a bunch of other like-minded individuals who are into the hobby, into painting, into gaming. If you happen to not use Facebook, but you'd still like to share and interact with us, make sure you tag us on Instagram when you throw up photos using our techniques. We'd like to see what you've come up with. If you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you check out DeathRedesigns.com. Anything you do over there helps keep the lights on, helps keep me employed so I can continue to produce content for you guys, which I love to do. I'd like to thank you guys for hanging out with me during this tutorial. I've really enjoyed doing these so far. And as always, happy wargaming, keep painting, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.